The autumn colors have been magnificent here at Notre Dame. Walking around campus um, and around the lakes in particular, I've been astounded by the beauty of the shades of red and gold. The leaves are dying and, and falling to the earth as nature prepares for the coming winter. The days are growing shorter for us who live here in the Northern Hemisphere. There's less and less sunlight in the morning and in the evening. The liturgical year is drawing to a close. Two weeks from today, we'll be celebrating the first Sunday of Advent and thus the first Sunday of a new liturgical year. As the, dark, as the darkness encroaches upon us, and as death in nature surrounds us, the church, in its choice of scripture readings for the liturgy, draws our attention to the end of time, to the end of all things. The purpose in doing so isn't to make us anxious or to cause us to cower in fear. Rather, it's to stir our devotion, to stir our devotion to the Lord and to renew our hope. For us, disciples of Jesus, the deepest desire of our heart is the coming of the day of the Lord. We long for that day because it will be the day when Christ's final and eternal victory will be made manifest. On that day, Christ, the light of the world, he whose light is brighter than that of the sun and the moon and the stars, will come and gather his elect. He who gathers us together on this Lord's day and who comes among us in word and in sacrament will gather us together on that day. He'll gather us together on that day too when he comes in power and in glory. And so, so the church invites us to contemplate that day, that day of the coming of the Lord, not with fear, but with hopeful anticipation. Hear the song of the psalmist. My heart is glad, my soul rejoices, my body abides in confidence because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your faithful one to undergo corruption. You will show me the path of life, fullness of joys in your presence, the delights at your right hand forever. What, what a hopeful future the author of all that is good has in store for us for us who are beneficiaries of his great mercy. Today's readings also include a call, a call to fidelity, to devotion. This world, friends, with all its wealth, honor, and acclaim is passing away. And in light of that truth, where does our devotion lie? Or to where, to whom is our devotion directed? Are we devoted to our piece of the pie, our allotted portion of this world's fame and fortune? Are we devoted to some future inheritance of land or of riches that we're promised or owed in, in this world? The call for us, believers, is not to be devoted to the things of this passing world, but to be devoted to the Lord our God, He who is our allotted portion and cup. It is He, it is He who is our inheritance. The praise and honors of this world aren't the source of our happiness. He is. The riches and wealth of this world aren't the source of our blessings. 
He is. Devotion to him, devotion to the Lord our God, is full and lasting happiness because he offers the best inheritance imaginable and because the portion he allots to us is of more value than, than any allotment we could possibly obtain for ourselves in this world. As I mentioned at the beginning of Mass, today concludes National Vocations Awareness Week, a week dedicated to promoting vocations to the priesthood and the consecrated life. I have the privilege of, of serving as director of the Office of Vocations for the priests and brothers of Holy Cross. While all Christians are called to be devoted not to the things of this passing world, but to the Lord our God, the consecrated life offers a particular witness of devotion to the Lord. Consecrated brothers, sisters, and priests are so taken up with the kingdom, with the world that is to come, that they choose to live it as fully as they can while here on earth by their vows of consecrated celibacy, poverty, and obedience. In the constitutions of the Congregation of Holy Cross, the rule of life for us men of Holy Cross, we read the following. By our vows of consecrated celibacy, poverty, and obedience, we are committed to single-hearted intimacy with God, to trusting dependence upon God, and to willing surrender to God. We dedicate ourselves to be prophetic signs through these vows. We are sojourners, sojourners in this world, longing for the coming of the new creation. The world is well provisioned with gifts from God's hand, but the gifts are often worshiped and the giver is ignored. We want to live our vows in such a way that our lives will call into question the fascinations of our world, pleasure, wealth, and power. Prophets stand before the world as signs of that which has enduring value, and prophets speak and act in the world as companions of the Lord in the service of his kingdom. We pray to live our vows well enough to offer such witness and service. It is a gift and a privilege to witness to that hopeful future that the author of all that is good has in store for us and to live in such a way so as to be singularly devoted to the Lord our God, the source of life and blessings, he who is our portion and our cup. The ministry that the Congregation of Holy Cross has entrusted to me is to invite young men here at Notre Dame and all across the United States to join us men of Holy Cross in offering that witness, in living that life of of singular devotion. To you young people here present, I ask, might God be calling you to be so taken up with the kingdom that you choose to live it as fully as you can while here on earth by committing yourself to single-hearted intimacy with God, to trusting dependence upon God, and to willing surrender to God, and thus live as a prophetic sign through those vows. And to you parents here present, I say, encourage your children to consider this life. I can tell you from firsthand experience that to live as a priest and as a consecrated religious is to live a life of full and lasting happiness, one to which I enthusiastically invite others. Brothers and sisters, the day of the Lord is coming the hoped for day, the longed for day, when this world will pass away. And when that day comes, it will be a cause for rejoicing and gladness because on that day, the Son of Man will come and gather us together to be with him 
and we will be forever with him because though the earth pass away, his words of life and of love will never pass away.